All right, we're going to go ahead and begin today's session. We're talking about optimizing piglet gut function for better performance. My name is Ryan Hines. I'm the communications manager in Biomin. I want to thank you all for joining us today. I'm joined by Anita Urbanchek. Hello, Anita. Hello, we can't Ryan. hear you. Yes, perfect. Great. Anita, it's great to see you there. Can you introduce yourself to our audience? Yes, of course. So welcome everybody on our webinar. My name is Anita Urbańczyk, like Ryan said. I'm working for Biomin almost uh, 10 years. I'm a technical sales manager responsible for the swine species. I'm working mainly in the European countries. I'm also support our colleagues in the eastern part of Asia. So in my daily work, I support uh, colleagues in the work in the field from the nutritional part and also from the farm management side. Excellent. And we Thank know you. that we're going to be hearing from you about some of those insights from the field. I'm also joined by another Biomin colleague, Mariana Maciero. Hi, Mariana. Hi, good morning, Ryan. Good morning, everyone that is watching us. Um, and, and you kind of represent another part of the world, right? So why don't you tell everyone about yourself? <laughs> yes, sure. Um, my name is Mariana Maciero. Uh, I am a product manager from the Phytogenics Group. I've been working for Biome for about one and a half years. And I'm also very happy to be here today to share some of the stories about our science-based solutions to the swine production challenges. Yes, we're all looking forward to the insights that you'll both share. Uh, before we hear from you, I just want to remind our live audience that this is an interactive session. So using the chat function of the webinar platform that you've got here, you can enter a question for Anita or Mariana at any point. And we'll try to get to as many of those as we can during the question and answer session uh, towards the end of today's one hour that we're here together. Uh, also, it's gonna give us an opportunity because it's interactive, we're gonna be asking you a couple of questions, audience poll questions to get your opinion on some of the issues that we're talking about today. So please also look forward to participating in those. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this topic about optimizing piglet gut function for better performance with Anita. So Anita, would you please start us off? Yes, uh, the first question, do you screen? We hear you. Do you hear me and do you see my screen? We absolutely see yes. the yes. Ryan, right, could sorry. you confirm? Okay, so let's start. <laughs> Thank you. So as Ryan said, uh, the topic for today is optimizing piglet gut function for better performance. And I would like to start to uh, give you uh, some uh, information about some overall goals which are in front of us. So we work with the high prolific sows. It means we work with the uh, High, with the high productive sows, which can give us a very well uh, prepared piglets for the future work. First, have to find, so one goal uh, is to maximize the number of the piglets because these high prolific sows is, uh, are able to produce any piglets in one liter. When we go a little bit uh, into the history, into the past, we can observe that the number of uh, piglets in litter incre increased continuously year after year. So, for example, in two years, then currently we are uh, able to count in every litter coming uh, from sows. So, uh, if we have the numerous litters, uh, the other challenge uh, which we have, this is the problem with uniforms, because if the piglets uh, were in the small amount, it's easier to reach the heavier piglets at birth. But if the litter is very numerous, the homogeneity of the of the piglets is uh, let's say huge uh, challenge so if weight is higher uh, we are able to easier manage this piglet after farrowing process so the beard weight uh, guarantee the possibility to survival to, to survival of this of these piglets so having higher beard weight piglets it means that we are able to increase their survival 
The other interesting topic is to maximize liters per year by, per, per year by optimizing the farrowing process. If we have numerous piglets, uh, we want to have shorter, faster farrowing process to receive stronger piglets uh, after birth. Other problem, if we have numerous liters, we need a lot of colostrum from the early beginning and later a lot of milk to be able to feed these piglets and also to receive higher piglets during the winning period. So the winning weight uh, during the winning time uh, is the better assessment of the quality of the sow's lactation. We also have to pay attention for the sow's. It means we want to optimize longevity and lifetime productivity of these sows to use them as long as possible with high piglets' productive possibilities. When we go to the uh, hyperprolific sows challenges, we can also divide it by different uh, phases, different stages in the uh, production cycle. So during the gestation, per uh, during the gestation period, uh, we have to focus for the proper fetus development for the placenta developments, which guarantee the proper development of the piglets and has huge influence for the future colostrum possibilities, colostrum synthesis. So we have to take care about the gestation period to keep sows in the proper condition, to prepare them to the farrowing process, which uh, is a huge challenge because it uh, creates the high metabolic stress for sows. So the transition period, this is the period uh, which uh, occur more or less 10, eight days before farrowing till more or less eight, 10 days after farrowing. And in this critical point, we have to really take care about the sows to make them calm, to give them all uh, requirement nutrients to make the farrowing uh, as, let's say, um, uh, unstressed for them as possible. Then we have the third period, it means lactation period, when the nutrient requirements increase uh, dramatically. So we have to give them totally different feed to cover the requirements during the lactation, during the milk production period. They are, under, uh, they, they are still under the high metabolic stress and they have to uh, start to produce colostrum and then a lot of milk to be able to feed the piglets which they have. On this graph, I will maybe switch the pointer. Yes, on, on this graph, I would like to show you how looks the situation according the year. For example, as I mentioned before, many years ago, when the litters were not such numerous, we had less piglets in the litter and they were able to reach higher winning weight around, for example, six or even seven kilograms. Then when we move to the high production sows, which are able to produce 16, even more piglets in one litter, then the homogeneity of these piglets are lower. And also the winning weight of these piglets, it's also lower compared to the data from, for example, 15 years ago. Also, the milk production increased from, for example, eight and a half liter per, per day till almost 12, even 12.5 liters per, per day to be able to feed these animals. Uh, when we discuss about lactation, we have to also pay attention for the condition of the sows, because if they start to produce high amount, higher amount of milk, they need a lot of nutrients to be able to produce this amount of milk. If the uh, if supply in nutrients is not enough, they start to mobilize the body reserves. It means they decrease the protein and fat deposition from, from the body. So we have to pay attention to keep sows in the proper condition. The other very important thing is the piglet mortality in the pre-weaning uh, period. So what are the predisposing factors of piglet pre-weaning mortality? We can divide these uh, factors for three groups. One is the group concerning the piglet factors, second concerning source factors, and the third uh, factors coming from the environment. I would start to, from the environment uh, point because it plays an important role because uh, this is something what influence immediately for the newborn piglets after birth. So if we have suboptimal ambient temperature, it has an impact for the newborn piglets. They start to chilling, they go to the lethargy and they don't want to eat the colostrum and probably they will die sooner or later. 
Other points from the environment uh, factors influence for the sows. We know that uh, newborn piglets need the high temperature to not chilling, but this high temperature could have a negative influence for the sows, could uh, stress them, they stop to eat, they are not able to produce enough milk, which is also direct influence for, for piglets. And also they start to uh, be a little bit uh, aggressive, they can crush piglets and we lose finally the piglets. When we go to the sauce factor, the other important points are body condition. So we have to pay attention for the proper body condition assessment during the whole cycle, not only during the farrowing process, but also in the end of the lactation to know how looks the body loses during the lactation, during the milk production process. Then we have to assess body condition in the middle of gestation. And also when they finish gestation, when they enter to the farrowing room to know in which condition sows goes to the, to the farrowing room. Because this moment is the most important for the farrowing kinetics is when sauce is uh, too big, too fat, usually it has negative influence for the farrowing process. It prolongs farrowing and loss, uh, also we can observe the long beer intervals between the piglets. It also has a negative infect, impact for, for piglets because uh, they stayed longer in the beard channel. They have problem with the uh, lack of oxygen and uh, we, have, we can observe uh, asphyxiation and piglet death. So other factors uh, coming from the piglet sites directly, as I mentioned before, the piglet birth play an important role when we discuss about the numerous liters. So if the piglet uh, birth weight is very low at the beginning, it's very difficult to manage these piglets. Usually they are not able to, to eat, they, they show us the lethargy effect and they, and they can also die very soon. Other problem, uh, when sows uh, are not able to produce enough colostrum, these piglets are also not able to eat this colostrum, so they died or they are very weak, poor, and they are very susceptible for the diseases. So the pre-weaning period, it's very uh, challenging for us, and we have to take care from all of these factors to prepare the proper environment for piglets and for sows to decrease the possibility to lose the piglets before weaning. Right, and certainly a, a complex set of factors that you've pointed out there with this uh, different maps and different uh, interconnected things to keep in mind. Um, let's take a step back and do a check with our audience in terms of production stages. You mentioned the challenges in this particular case, but let's turn to our first audience poll and ask you, uh, please go ahead and choose the one best answer that fits what you see in your experience, which period do you find most challenging in spine production? Maternity or farrowing, weaning, growing, finishing, or perhaps all of the above? Uh, we're going to go ahead and give everyone just a few moments to go ahead and select your answer. And as those votes come in, we already see many of you have uh, jumped at the chance to weigh in here. Uh, we see some, I'm going to read these out. We've had nearly, okay, 60% of votes have come in. So I'm going to close it and then we're going to have a look at this and see where everyone stands as a group today. All right, so with two thirds of votes in, I'm going to go ahead and close it. Thank you all for participating. Let's go ahead and have a look at those results. So in terms of percentages, uh, we have 29% they said maternity and farrowing is the most challenging. A full 60% said that weaning is really the, the most difficult. And growing, finishing, no problems at all. Either that's good news, I hope. And 11%, uh, all of the above. Right? So those are that's your view on the situation. Anita, how does that match with what you see when you're speaking with Biomin customers out in the field? Yes, I'm very glad for, for this answer because uh, I also go to the to the winning uh, answer 
because the most challenging period is the winning. Of course, all periods are important because if we do some mistakes, uh, let's say with the uh, farrowing or maternity period, it has, of course, influence for the uh, future development of the piglets. But uh, when the farm is well managed, it's not a problem yes, to, to have a proper, let's say, uh, farrowing uh, uh, kinetics, etc. But the, the winning period, this is the period which is the huge challenge uh, every time in all types of farm, even if they are very, very well managed. Why I, I focus uh, on the winning period? Because uh, as uh, all of us know, 70% of the um, immunity of the body comes from the gut. So we have to focus for the gut uh, quality and we have to take care about the sows and about the piglets to prepare them to the winning period. Why I uh, pay attention for this? Because uh, the gut is the largest interface which join the body of the animals with the uh, world which is outside. The inner surface of is 10 times, can you imagine, 10 times wider than outer one. This is like a soccer field. And this is what I would like to show you. When we go to this uh, graph on the left side, the picture on the left side, you see very well, perfect prepared soccer field to play. And when we go to the uh, uh, simple, let's say, example, coming directly from the gut when we have the picture from the electron microscope, microscope showing us the quality of the gut, the surface, internal surface of the gut with the very well developed villi which are responsible for the absorption of the nutrient, we know that they are well prepared, they are able to take everything from the feed which we deliver. But the problem appears when our, let's say, soccer field looks like the picture on the right side, and then looking into the uh, information coming directly from the gut structure, we see that some of these villi are still working, but most of them start to be destroyed and they are not able to absorb the nutrient. The problem appears when we have, let's say, soccer field looking like this on the bottom picture, and you can see that this is totally destroyed, the uh, surface of the villi, they are totally macerate, they are not able to uh, absorb nutrients. So we have to go to this direction to keep gut in the high, let's say, um, quality. Why I mention about this? Because the, the development of the gut plays an important role, especially during the weaning period, because usually we wean piglets around 21, 28 days of their life. And the problem appears exactly in this moment, because we know that piglets need longer time to fully mature the small intestine. It, they need more or less seven, 10 days longer period than four weeks. In case of the large intestine, you can see that they need another three weeks to fully mature. So when we win piglets, in the third or fourth week of their lives, they are not fully prepared to digest all nutrients which we deliver through the feed which we give them. So this is the challenge. Why? Other point. When piglets birth, they have the maternal immunity, which we call the passive immunity coming from mothers, from sows, and this passive immunity, immunity goes down according the age they start to be, build their own active immunity because they receive the immunoglobulins from the colostrum, they start to drink milk, they, un, they are under influence of the environment condition, so they start to build, build their own active immunity. And during the weaning process, depends when we win piglets, they have under higher or lower challenge because of this immunity. So if we win piglets very early, usually the passive immunity goes down and active immunity starts to build, but it's not enough to protect animals. And this is the moment when we have the situation with compromised gastrointestinal barrier development and function. In this period, we see that, the, that increase the inter, intestinal permeability and we have situation with the immune depression. So 
when we when we win piglets a little bit later for example after three weeks after four in four weeks which is normal what we do on the farm the, then we create the better condition for the piglets they are better prepared for the environmental challenges because the active immunity it's much higher than it was for example a few days before and in this situation the gastrointestinal tract is well well developed better mature and it's easier to manage these piglets other very important point uh, when we discuss about post winning development uh, we have to pay attention for the grow curve in the ideal situation the grow curve should increase step by step continuously but this is the perfect idea but in the practice what we observe when piglets were born they start to eat colostrum milk they also have access to the feed to used to to eat the feed which will be the main feed after winning and they start to grow but during the winning period which usually occur in the fourth week or even earlier the problem is that they have dropped with the feed intake we change totally the feeding system from from milk to the solid feed and in this moment uh, we see the drop in the grow because they don't eat they stop to use milk they switch to the solid feed and we observe the huge lack of the energy if they don't want to eat we see that uh, we can observe the problem with the gut development and we discuss about the immune dip when they have low feed intake they start to be hungry so after a few days they start to interest the feed they start to eat but usually they overeating what creates a problem and and can lead to edema disease which usually we observe after one week one and a half week after weaning so this period is the most challenging for us to prepare piglets to this weaning dip to improve gut development to be able to manage this time and to not show us the, let's say, gut wall damages. What is important, and I would like to show you how looks the first days after weaning from the piglet side. You can see that when we go to the feed intake issue, we see on the blue bar how many times they visit the trough and they feed they eat the feed from the trough on the red bars you can see how many times they are going into the feeders area but without uh, eating feed from the trough so first of all they are going because they are under the stress they are looking what they have but they are not eating after half a day some of the piglets are able to eat something but they are still walking and interesting what they have there but not eat too much so we can observe that it it's really let's say direct correlation with visits and also intake of the feed after one and a half or two days so of course this period depends from the winning time but we can observe that after one and a half day piglets starts to really eat the feed which is accessible in the feeder so it creates the future problem if they don't eat then they start to eat too much because they are hungry and it creates the problem with the edema disease in the end of the first week after farrowing so the most important point is to increase the early feed intake after winning to prevent piglets against possibility to show to have edema disease so if the piglet starts to eat very early feed solid feed because of this we implement solid feed just from early beginning during the lactation period to give them possibility to learn that they can eat something else not only milk but also the solid feed which will be the the main feed after weaning so if they start to eat the solid feed very early it has the influence for for the gastrointestinal surface development for the villi high we can see that if they eat around 400 5 even 600 grams per day the villi high is much higher compared to the piglets which it eats for example one or 100 or 200 grams per day so you can see on the left side on this picture very well prepared very well formed uh, 
villi structure which is able to uh, uh, absorb as much nutrient as possible from the feed so this is the the surface uh, when we compare to our soccer field to the well-prepared soccer field on the right side if we have let's say not enough feed intake before and after winning then the, we have problem with totally maceration of the villi and they are not able to absorb the nutrients from the feed and usually we have problem with the after the winning with the diarrheas with the weak piglets uh, not easy to manage one of the most important thing is the nutrient nutrient utilization. So if the nutrients are easy accessible for the animals, then they start to uh, they start eat this feed, they use this feed for the gastrointestinal tract preparation for the future task for the maintenance. But when the uh, nutrient supply is limited, then the problem appear. Why? Because if the nutrient supply is limited, the natural response from the organism is to use this nutrient to survive. So it means, as I mentioned before, 70% of the immunity comes from the gut. So first of all, this nutrient they will use to take care about the gut, about to take care about immunity, to take care about the maintenance. After that, they start to use these nutrients for heat regulation, for activities, and if they will have enough nutrients, they will think, let's say, about grow and about reproduction. So we have to take care about the requirements of particular phases during the development process to deliver enough nutrients for maintenance, for gastrointestinal tract development, and especially for grow, which is last in the queue when we prioritize the, um, uh, the value of the particular, let's say, stages. Uh, why I mentioned be uh, about this? Because uh, we are focused on the winning period, uh, which is, let's say, at the beginning of the piglet's life. So in this moment, when we deliver, let's say, all necessary nutrients, we don't see very huge effect in this moment. We know that we can influence for the better gut development. We see it under microscope that the villi works properly. But in this moment, we don't. We are not able to really touch this huge influence. But this moment has a huge influence for the future development and the future result, because having, for example, heavier piglets at winning with the one kilogram difference compared to the others, it means that we are able to make these piglets faster to the market for one week. And this is the huge difference. The other point, when we discuss about the feed intake, how the feed intake is divided for the particular organism function. So at the beginning, when we are in the, let's say, young piglets uh, period, they use 50 of the receiving feet for maintenance and 50 of receiving feet for the grow. But this situation change after some time when they go to the growing part from 25 from 30 kilograms, they still use small part, more or less the same for keeping maintenance on the same level. But in this case, when they eat much more feed, this is only 30, 35% of the total feed intake. And the rest, it means more than 60% of the feed intake, they use for the grow. So proper management in the beginning phase, in the winning period, it has a huge influence for the future grow possibilities during the growing and fattering period. Great. So you've definitely outlined here uh, the importance of supporting feed intake and a couple of potential challenges that we see uh, with piglets. Uh, let's use this opportunity to launch our second audience poll question. We're going to put that up on screen right now. So for those of you listening, please let us know what kind of tools or solutions you use on your operation or if you recommend in the function as a consultant um, in order to support nursery piglets. And we've got several options listed. You can choose multiple options if you use several of these tools, uh, organic acids, phytogenic feed additives, essential oils uh, based products, pre or probiotics, zinc oxide, uh, or other tools. Uh, we see that 
everyone has keenly jumped in uh, to participate. That's great. We're already at half the response of everyone attending. We're going to go ahead and share these results as well and take a look at your familiarity and with these different categories of products and what you have to say about that. So we're going to give everyone just another moment. And at the two thirds mark, we're going to go ahead and close the poll. So I want to thank you all for participating. Let's see what it is you had to say. Now, remember multiple answers were allowed. So these numbers will add up to more than 100%. Uh, but we did see organic acids is the most prominent uh, in terms of experience and use and recommendation, uh, followed by a tie between phytogenic feed additives and pre or probiotics. Uh, zinc oxide down there at a lower 18% and others as well. So a couple of tools are, are neck and neck in there. Um, Anita, are there any surprises in those results? No, I'm not surprised. I'm also glad for, from, from these answers because the feed additives are very helpful tool to, to, to help us to manage piglets in this uh, critical period. And uh, in this moment, I would uh, like to go to this, uh, let's say, um, part concerning directly the, the, the improvement of the feed uh, intake. So uh, we, we, we should pay attention for the improvement of the feed intake just before and directly after winning. And uh, what we can do, we can use a lot of tools which are accessible on the market. And because of this, we go to these uh, questions, we put these answers uh, just to let us know uh, in which direction you go with your solutions. So first of all, we have to pay attention how to stimulate the higher fit intake. And we should uh, um, involve our piglets in the learning process before winning. Because if we give them for the first time the solid fit after after winning, this is too late because they are not used to eat this feed. So we have to stimulate, we have to treat them, uh, train them uh, how to eat this feed before farrowing. So usually in the day five, six, we start to put a very small amount of the feed to give them possibility to taste it, to see what is this. So. Um, uh, this is the, the, the reason why we do this, to, to make it possible to increase the fit intake just after winning, to not create the winning gap, which, as, which I was mentioned before. So uh, when we focus for the first day after winning, uh, we have to take care about the piglets, not only from the feeder side, but we have to create the uh, comfortable conditions for them. So we have to take uh, care about the proper temperature, about the light, uh, also about the access to the fresh, uh, good quality, clean water, because usually we, uh, we always focus for the feed intake, for the feed quality, for the feed composition, but we forgot about the nutrient access without uh, water, to the water access, of course. Without uh, water access, uh, they are not able to eat enough the feed which is in the feeder. Uh, the other point is the management, the proper management with piglets uh, during the farrowing process, during the lactation period, but the management after weaning plays an important role. For example, when we create the groups uh, with the animals, we have to divide it, for example, piglets coming from the gills, uh, in the separate group, not keeping them together with the older souls after the third, fourth uh, farrowing process. Also, the genetics plays an important role because it increase or decrease the possibility to feed intake. Also, the, for, uh, the form of the feed uh, plays an important role. For example, liquid feed, we, when we prepare the, the uh, let's say, pulp uh, during the first two, three days uh, after winning, it's easier to, to, to be intake for the piglets. Uh, the other important point is the composition of this feed, and this is the topic for the long discussion. Uh, but just shortly to the point, we have to use the high quality raw materials, uh, really well accessible, well digestible for the new win piglets. So uh, we should use such raw materials like milk powder, like whey powder, very good quality of the protein, uh, like fish meal with the high content, uh, well digestible protein, blood plasma also. The cereals should be uh, under the uh, ther thermal treatment like extruded or micronized form. And also what is very important, we can put uh, feed additives 
to support early feed intake and to uh, protect gut. And one of these solutions could be exactly phytogenic solution to reach this target. Absolutely. And speaking of phytogenics, we have brought our resident expert, Mariana, if you would come back and join us here. There she is. Hi. Great. Um, <laughs> we're going to have you pick up on that topic in particular, right? So let's mm -hmm. go ahead and hand the control over to you. And as we're doing so, I just wanted to remind our audience that uh, we have the chat function available here in the webinar platform. If you have any questions on what you've heard so far, how it might apply uh, to your business, uh, we will address as many of those as we can in the Q&A session. We've already had a few good questions come in, so I'm looking forward to being able to ask Anita and Mariana about those. Uh, Mariana, please. Can you see my right slide? Ahead. We see you up and running. That's mm -hmm. great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anita, for um, explaining all of us, uh, all the big challenges during the winning period. It was uh, very good and clear. And also for introducing the phytogenic feed additives as one of the solutions. And I'm going to start jumping right in on the properties of phytogenic feed additives. So, uh, oops, there you go. We know that uh, phytogenic feed additives have uh, sensory properties, which will influence the smell and the taste of the feed. And then these, of course, will support the feed intake of the animals. And also, we know that uh, phytogenic feed additives also has biological properties. And among these biological properties, we have antioxidant activity, anti-inflammatory activity, uh, antimicrobial, antifungal, also stimulating some secretion for digestive juices. And the um, act action of all of these uh, activities will then support digestion. And with the addition of sensory properties and biological properties, we then can uh, observe uh, optimizing uh, performance in the animals. Um, Last year, we published a survey. Uh, it, you can also have access on this on our website. And we asked multiple different questions. And one of the questions that we asked to the different stakeholders, it was what is the motivation for use on phytogenic feed additives? And um, we are doing now the series of antibiotic reduction uh, in, in animals webinars. And you can see here that um, antibiotic growth promoter and replacement strategy was ranking as one of the top motivations for use of uh, phytogenic feed additives. Now, talking more specifically about the biomine solution, uh, phytogenic feed additives for wind piglets, we have the Gestrum DCXL. So what is uh, the Gestrum DCXL? It is the next generation phytogenic feed additive. It's, it's based on the biomine duplex capsule technology. This technology allows the triple action formulation, which will boost the feed intake due to the appetizing and endogenous secretion feature. Also supports the balanced gut function due to the gut microbiota modulation and also gut protection features. And all of these combined will then improve the performance in wind piglets. So what makes our product unique? Uh, from one side is the duplex capsule technology, which has, uh, um, it promotes the homogeneous distribution and less dust. It also protects the volatile active ingredients from oxidation improves the shelf life, and also it provides a slow release of the active ingredients along the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, there is also the use of technical recognition as a unique selling point, which uh, the product has been specially designed to support needs of nursery pigs, and also it contains, uh, the gestrin DCX cell contains the biomine DCC capsule, which is uh, which has the EUSO technical registration. 
So digestion DCXL is the solution to increase the nutrient availability for pro production, resulting in a better average daily gain in stronger animals. Uh, but how does it do that and what is the mode of action behind this? We have here split it in four different modules. So we have a mode of action of the stimulation of feed intake and gut development. Also, due to the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects, we have a, a decrease in inflammatory processes. We also have a, a modulation of gut microbiota and as well as an increase in gut integrity. And having all of those working together, we are going to result then in a, in a healthier gut and as well as uh, animals performing um, better and stronger. Um, just to take us a bit deeper into the gut physiology, here I have a, a picture of a the gut functionality, which has the multi-layer protection. Um, we can see here that we have the intestinal lumen, which has the feed and, and the microbes. And then we have the interface of the microbiota and the epithelium uh, in, uh, cells. We have the epithelium phase, which is a, a single layer of uh, cells, which are called enterocytes. And there is also all their specialized cells like goblet cells. And then we also have the lamina propria and the mesentery as uh, part of the mucosa immune system. And we know that phytogenics, they, they have uh, several um, uh, data from the literature that provides support saying that phytogenics are able to influence the uh, gut microbiota and they are also able to in increase the intestinal integrity and also have an effect on the mucosa immune system due to the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. Um, giving a little bit of zoom and focusing now on, on the single layer of cells, I'm going to show some results from a, an in vitro test that we did. And I just want to explain uh, exactly what the measurement that we did uh, what, what exactly it means. So if we have here the, the single layer of cells, we are able to measure how tight are these cells and how good is this protection. So the, the method that we, we use is measuring the tear value. So if the tear value is high, it means that this protection is good. And if the tear value is low, it means that there is a, a breakage and there is a possibility for pathogenic bacteria, for example, to invade uh, the, the mucosa and cause some inflammatory processes. Here you can see this tight junction complex. And on the right, you see a zoom into it. And it means that the tight junction proteins is actually a, a complex group of uh, a complex system of proteins together. And here you see all of the different proteins that are part of it. And I'm explaining these things because I, I'm going to show some results that I just want to put everybody into the same uh, perspective. Um, we did the in vitro test. We used um, epithelial cells. And then we were able to break the tie junction. So we did some stressors in the cells and the tie junctions were, were broken. Then in one group, we didn't use anything. And on the second group, the test, we used some phytogenic comp compounds. And then we measured the tear value, as I mentioned before. So you can see here from the results that when herbs and extracts uh, were used, we were able to improve the resemble. I lost the, <laughs> do you see my slides? Uh, we, we just see your slide deck again. Yeah, you seem to have dropped out of presentation mode. Okay, I'm going to stop and start it again. Hopefully yeah. it won't be a problem. Not sure what happened. Sorry about that. No, not a problem. I, we've had some great questions come in already. Uh, Anita, maybe I can ask you one uh, as we're getting the slides back up. Uh, we had a couple questions about grouping. Uh, 
in particular, uh, why would it be important to separate guilts uh, or separate piglets from first parity guilts uh, from older sows piglets? And I believe related to that, we're also asking uh, why, uh, yeah, uh, more about separation. Why is it important to keep piglets from guilts in different groups? So several people were interested in that. Maybe you could speak just a bit to that. Uh, if Mariana is ready, we can go to this later. If not, we, I can answer <laughs> as, as you we'll wish. Come, we'll, we'll come back to your the questions once we get to the <laughs> Q&A. Mariana, please. Uh, Does it work now? Do you see my slides? We see your slides up. And okay. Please go ahead uh, and share these results with us. Uh, we have about okay. uh, 15 minutes with our audience uh, to cover the okay. remainder and to get to a few of these good questions that we've had come in. Okay. So uh, as you can see here, when the herbs and extracts were used, we're able to improve the tier value, which means that the gut barrier was improved. And also uh, the same test has been done with licorice, which had an even faster recovery of the gut barrier. And both of these are components of DCXL. We also did a, a test measuring the expression of tight junction proteins. And we observed that the cloud genes had a higher expression by 33% when uh, licorice was included. Uh, we also did a trial uh, in cooperation with Iowa State University, and we observed uh, a, div a greater development of the ileum morphology. You can see here that the vilus was higher, and while keeping the same crypt and, and vilus uh, ratio. And also, we had a uh, uh, results about the goblet cells, which shows that we were able to improve the amount of goblet cells, and these cells are the ones responsible to produce the mucin, which is very important for the gut protection. The same trial, we measured uh, nitrogen balance, and you can see here, starting from the feed intake, the animals received a, a greater, uh, animals receiving digestion DCXL, had a greater nitrogen intake, no difference on the fecal excretion, a decrease in nitrogen excretion in the urine, and the, as a result, there was a 37% increase on nitrogen retention, which means that nitrogen had a better protein, uh, that the animals had a better protein utilization. A trial that we did in Hungary and I'm going to go pretty fast on this one so we have more time for questions. Uh, we used 192 piglets for 42 days, and then we observed the, we separate them in two groups, the control and the test. You can see here that the animals had a significant improve on average daily weight gain of 36 grams per day higher than the control. When looking on average daily feed intake, there was a numerical improvement and feed conversion ratio was uh, six points uh, different from 156 to 1.5. The mortality of the animals will also decrease from 6.25 to 2.8. And on the economical analysis of this test, we observed a 23.9 net return on investment, which is very good, very high and uh, the break-even was 1.5 grams per pig per day and as you remember as i showed before we had 26. on this compilation of trial uh, we observed on average that digestion dc excel it's able to improve feed intake by 2.6 percent compared to control by four percent on average daily weight gain and decrease on 2.6 points of feed conversion ratio. So this shows that uh, different experiences from different uh, production systems had on average this improvement. It's also nice to see that we, we have done a test on, on in Netherlands uh, using 312 piglets and we measured the ammonia emission. And you can see here on the right, not, the ammonia emission expressed as kilograms of ammonia for animal place per year, that there was a decrease of 26% uh, reduction on, on this second phase here 
when the product was used. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have the use of technical uh, authorization. We submitted this uh, dossier in 2017. 2018, we had the positive EPSA opinion. In 2020, then we had the authorization of the Biomine DCC as a zootechnical additive for wind piglets. And this is a component of DC Excel. So as a take home message, uh, early feed intake, as Anita described, guarantees the proper gut development and then of course maintains, uh, support the animals for the following phase, the growing and finishing phase. The DC Excel supports the piglets during this challenge because of the stimulation of feed intake, the decreasing on inflammatory processes modulate gut microbiota and also increasing the gut integrity. And as a result, as a result to all of this, the solution increases then the nutrient availability, production resulting in better average daily gain and stronger animals. Okay, and that's it from my side and we can jump in into the questions and answers. Mariana, Anita, that was great. Um, very clear. Uh, we saw a lot of scientific evidence uh, in that presentation. We've received a bunch of questions. Anita, let me start with you uh, that we can visit that grouping. And, and let's, I don't want to make this, maybe it's a bit of a lightning round so we can get through a few of these. Uh, just high level, what do you see in terms of a recommendation or um, benefits around separation of piglets and groups? As we had a couple of uh, questions around that. So, uh, yes, uh, this is the very important point because uh, starting from the early beginning, just shortly to the point, the, the, the split suckling uh, plays an important role just after birth to give all of the piglets a possibility to take uh, a colostrum. Uh, what is the most important to take minimum one, 150 or 200 grams in the first hour of their life because we build the uh, active immunity. This is the, the, the perfect moment to, uh, to increase the possibility to absorb the, the immunoglobulins coming directly from the, from the, from the, from the colostrum. Uh, then uh, we have also the, the fostering, uh, let's say, possibilities. It means that we create the foster mother and we divide the, the litter for the weak and, uh, let's say, big, good, uh, well-prepared piglets. And also uh, we, we give this, uh, these piglets possibility to drink milk from the mother uh, to, to, to divide the, the litter for the particular numbers of the piglets. For example, if the nipples work well, we can count the, 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 the nipples and then we can uh, keep, uh, for example, 13, 14 piglets together. If they doesn't work, then we can keep only 12 piglets. So the management, the, the grouping of the piglets plays an important role from early beginning. Also after weaning, when we have the uh, different condition of the piglets, we have to group them according to the condition to not keep, let's say, an homogeneous group because the biggest one will be also first uh, in, near the trough and the weak we can lose because they will be last in the queue. Excellent, very, very clear. So I want to thank you uh, for getting those points. Um, we want to talk about improving feed intake and you made some emphasis, Anita, about a uh, really certain period right before weaning in the early days of weaning, uh, you really need to emphasize feed intake. Uh, here we have a question from Yako. If you have a target feed intake per piglet prior to weaning, is there a certain number that people should reach for or is it or just a general trend that you should try to encourage an increase? Yes, there exist some, uh, let's say, concrete numbers, depends from the genetic guidelines. So we can discuss directly about particular, let's say, uh, um, genetics recommendations. But usually we have to pay attention to give them as much feed as possible. Of course, the feed intake uh, depends from the uh, structure of the feed, from the quality of this feed, which we deliver to the feeder, from the composition. But the main rule is as much as possible, which gives us the, the, the information that they are well prepared and the gut are developed in the right way. Great. Uh, let's talk a bit about uh, feed composition, right? We have the question here. Um, we saw, Mariana, you give us results from trials conducted in various places uh, across the world. Uh, maybe they're using different ingredients in the feed. Uh, to what extent does feed composition have an effect on these results? Uh, what do we mm -hmm. need to consider? What and what can we take away from the message in terms of 
how much feed intake improvement we can expect, uh, some of the mm -hmm. other benefits pointed out. Yes, sure. So um, across the trials that we did, of course, we used uh, standard diets for piglets that we use in different regions. Uh, most of the trials were done with uh, uh, corn and soybean-based diets, but there is also other important ingredients that has like a, a high digestibility of proteins, for example, whey, and as Anita uh, mentioned in one of her slides of high, highly digestible uh, protein sources for the piglets, which is very important. So for all of the, our trials, we try to minim maximize the diet to use what it is being used in the in the production system to make sure that the results that we are having of course will be comparable whenever we use the product in in the field great um, and uh, sticking with you mariana uh speaking of product we have a question uh well first a comment uh, anita thanks for a splendid lecture a uh, question for mariana Digesterome is indeed a breakthrough for optimizing piglets' gastrointestinal tract functionality. However, uh, what about affordability? What about the return on investment? Is this for everyone? Uh, is it available for large scale operations and for small farmers as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have, uh, I showed you a positive return on investment, which was uh, pretty high, but then of course, we will have to take a look on, on each in a case by case. Uh, overall, we do have uh, different positive um, uh, experiences in, in smaller and bigger operations. Uh, the product, it is a, a very high quality product. So in regards to the price, we have to, of course, pay attention on what exactly is the, the value and that the product brings. And um, it, we would have to analyze in a case by case, but we, we have several different experiences and, and then all of them showed some positive return on investment using the product. Great. And uh, those sorts of discussions can be had with your biomin representative in your area as well uh, mm -hmm. to just get in touch with them to find that correct match uh, for your operation. Uh, we have a question here. You know, we're we spoke about gut health. We also touched on challenges. So uh, leaving feed intake aside, maybe we could uh, tackle this question about uh, post-weaning diarrhea. So um, piglet scours uh, is something we didn't focus a lot on in today's discussion, but are there feed additive solutions that would be effective in addressing that? Do we see that here uh, or would other tools be more appropriate? What are your thoughts? Yes, I think the, the phytogenic so feed the additives they can... <laughs> okay. Sorry, I, I would just start, Anita, and you can uh, feel free to compliment. Yes, yes, of uh, course. <laughs> yes, the phytogenic feed additives, they do play a role on, on, help, on supporting the animals against diarrhea because, as I showed, the anti-inflammatory antioxidant effects, also making sure that the animals are eating and decreasing the challenge and improving the resilience, this will all have an effect on, on preventing the, the, the occurrence of diarrhea. Uh, and uh, yes, Anita, if you would like to talk about maybe combinations or other uh, solutions that we can use for this problem. Yes, exactly. As you mentioned, because of the uh, very, uh, very wide anti-inflammatory properties, phytogenics is, is, are the one of most suitable uh, products which we can add to, to the diet for the, for the weaning piglets. From the other side, uh, the post-weaning diarrhea, uh, this is the huge challenge coming from the gram-negative bacteria like E. coli, for example. So we can go to the uh, acidification, so to the acidifiers organic uh, acid solution. So the, the proper composition of the organic acids can play an important role to decrease the, the pathogen challenge in these critical periods. So I would go to the combination to the phytogenic solution, to the acidification, proper acidification. And also, please don't forget about the mycotoxins risk management, because if we have the mycotoxins challenge, of course, the susceptibility of the, manity, of the animals increase dramatically, especially in this uh, challenging period for them. All right, great. So thank you for that advice. Uh, something to look out for there um let's talk a little bit about cell lactation right uh anita you mentioned that hyper prolific cells uh, uh lots of 
pigus to feed, lots of milk to provide. Um, is there any evidence or any indication um, that we can support sufficient milk production uh, with any types of additive phytogenics or otherwise? Yes, exactly. This is a good uh, moment to, to, to go to this point because, of course, the phytogenics, uh, this is a very, very good tool which we can put into the lactation feed to improve the feed intake because we know that if they are able to eat more, they are able to produce more and better quality, uh, uh, not only milk, but also colostrum uh, from the beginning. So we have a lot of data coming directly from the field trial from the scientific trial which we noticed that we are we, we were able we are able continuously to improve the, the lactation and uh, as i always um, um, uh, emphasize very hardly that the winning weight of the piglets is the better assessment of the lactation quality great and that um brings us I think, to the end of our hour together today uh, anita mariana this was great. I really appreciate it. I want to thank uh, both of you for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you very much for the discussion. It was great. And, and to our audience, thank you for your participation, your attention, your great questions uh, to both Anita and Mariana. Uh, if you haven't received your answer yet in today's discussion, a Biomin representative will follow up with an answer for you. Uh, I would ask, just ask you one thing before we leave. As soon as we close our session, you're going to have a feedback form that pops up on your screen. It just takes a minute or two to let us know if you enjoyed this session, if it was useful for you, or what kind of topics you might want us to discuss in the, for, in the future as we continue along this series of uh, webinars that's been running since March. So thank you for your time today. On behalf of Biomin, have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.